In this video, we tackle our long-standing problem of keeping byte counts and calculating jump lengths. Here's what I have in mind. The top program is written in the usual DMP form. In this program, we jump to label begin with jump rel32. Of course, label begin is imaginary. It's only a comment. When we compute the jump, we use the byte counts that we tallied and wrote in by hand. The byte count after this jump instruction is 59. At label begin, the byte count is 60. 60 minus 59 is 07, or 07000000 in 4 byte little endian. We're using jump rel32 here, and not our usual rel8, because we're also dealing with calls, and the x86 instruction set has no call rel8. Things are simpler for us today if we use only the 4 byte forms. We set EAX to 1 for a syscall exit. We call set status with call rel32. 59 minus 68 is F1, FF, FF, FF. Here, EBX gets the contents of a memory location named status. The memory location is known by its 4 byte address in memory 6A800408. The bottom program is written in this language DMQ that we're inventing right now. DMQ improves on our old format DMP. There are still hexadecimal numeral pairs to express bytes of machine code. And there are these new symbols, colon, plus, and minus. A number followed by a colon, plus, or minus does not become a byte in the binary. Instead the number is a file position that we use as a label. This 100 colon says to move to position 100 in the executable file and write any subsequent bytes starting there. This 140 plus says to insert into the executable file the 4 byte address corresponding to file position 140. What the programmer knows as 140 plus, the machine knows as 140 plus 00800408 equals 40810408. This 100 minus says to insert into the executable file a 4 byte jump length, the difference between file position 100 and the file position here. By here we mean the end of the 4 bytes we're about to write, as in the jump and call instructions. What the programmer knows as 100 minus, the machine knows as 100 minus 128 equals D8 FFFFFF. Since set status begins at file position 100, this E8 100 minus means call set status. These numeric labels in DMQ are kind of like labels in assembly language, except DMQ labels are hexadecimal numbers. We don't use the full alphabet in DMQ labels, although we can in DMQ, as in DMP, put descriptive labels in comments. When we write a number followed by a colon, we're not asking the system to record the position of a label within the file. Rather, we're telling the system where in the file to move the output pointer. This scheme also helps us to align elements of our programs, to place them at addresses that are multiples of 16 or 32 or whatever. We make the top program 7t2.dmp and run it. Here's the binary of the top program. Let me skip ahead a bit and show you the output of the bottom program, 73.dmq, from the DMQ compiler. The two executables are similar, but not identical. The DMQ binary is longer. That's the trade-off. With DMQ, we enlarge the executable file for alignment or to avoid counting. In this program, it's okay that we chose 100, 120, and 140, as clearly there were fewer than 32 bytes of machine code after each label. There's no need to write byte counts into the DMQ program if we put a numeric label at the target of each jump or call. The minus feature of the DMQ compiler computes these jump lengths automatically. Before we write the DMQ compiler, is it fair to call it a compiler, given that it is weaker than an assembler? Well, I think it's okay. Compiler is a pretty broad term. 7DMQC is a small compiler for a weak language. If you prefer to think of 7DMQC as a primitive assembler, that's okay too. 
First we'll warm up with programs 7DMQA and 7DMQB. Then we'll write the full compiler 7DMQC. Program 7DMQA does more or less what XXD-P-R does, translate hexadecimal pairs into binary. Here's the plan. Register EDI is an output file pointer, really a position in the output file, in bytes counting up from zero. Register EDX keeps EDI max, the greatest value that EDI achieves as the program runs. This is to determine the output file size. In this program, EDI only increases, so EDI and EDX keep the same value as the program runs. But in the final compiler, EDI may skip around, and the values of EDI and EDX may differ. As we scan the input from beginning to end, the number currently being read is kept in register EBX, our accumulator. We proceed to fetch a byte from the input stream. If the byte is white space immediately after a number, then we write into the output buffer at position EDI the accumulator's least significant byte. Really, it's the only significant byte of the accumulator, as each number followed by white space is exactly two hexadecimal numerals long. At least that's been our custom. Then we jump back to fetch another number. If the byte is white space and the accumulator is still null, then we jump back to number without writing a byte. If the byte is a numeral, we update EBX, shifting it left four bits and adding the four bit value of the present byte. Then we jump back to fetch another byte. Function getByte is able to detect when the input is done, and if so, it invokes function write, which does a syscall write to put out the binary, and the program exits. In the DMP program, we see the exact addresses of the input and output buffers. Initially, ECX contains the address of the beginning of the text segment. We're calling it head. Later in the program, ECX contains IBUF or OBUF. ESI is the input pointer, and EBP contains the number of bytes available in the input buffer, same as in program 5STRC. Here we set EDX to EDI, if EDX is smaller than EDI, by instruction CMOVEL, conditional move if less. Our null value for EBX is actually a negative number with many zeros, so that when we shift it left 4 bits, the result is zero, but until then EBX is negative, a condition that's easy to test. We can recognize white space with a single comparison due to the design of ASCII. If the current byte is not white space, we jump to block numeral. Block numeral converts an ASCII character to a binary number and updates the accumulator. Function getByte is like getByte in program 5STRC, with a few differences. The values of EBX and EDX are pushed onto the stack before those registers are used as syscall parameters. After the syscall, EDX is popped before jump write, as write needs EDI max. EBX is popped after jump write, as write needs EBX to be zero. ECX is set to IBUF for the syscall read. If we reach the end of the block, ECX is reset to head. Otherwise, ECX remains at IBUF, so that in write, another one bit left shift sets ECX to OBUF. Blocks write and exit also resemble program 5STRC. And it works. Program 7DMQB does more or less what my script make.sh does. 7DMQB is like 7DMQA, but it also accepts and ignores comments in the source file. A comment begins at a hash character and ends just before the next new line character. File 7DMQB.DMP is straightforward. Note that in case of a comment, execution continues from the end of the block. The new line remains in AL to be processed as whitespace in the next block. So if a hash character appears immediately after a numeral, the byte in the accumulator is not abandoned, but eventually is written out. It is customary in Unix that each line of a text file, even the last line, ends with a new line character.
The final program, 7DMQC, is like 7DMQB with three differences. 7DMQC's init routine copies 7DMQC's own ELF header into the output buffer. The only difference between 7DMQC's ELF header and the ELF header of the output program is the file size, and we're keeping that value in EDX. Block write copies EDX into place in the header of the output file, file position 44. Block colon sets the output pointer EDI to the accumulator EBX. There's a new block for symbols plus and minus. EDI increases by 4. We're appending a 4-byte number to the output. We can formulate that 4-byte number in EBX as we have no need beyond this block for the value of the accumulator. EBX will be reset to null when we jump back to number. In case plus, we add address head to EBX. In case minus, we subtract the current file position from EBX. Then EBX is appended to the output. Looking at 7dmqc.dmp, the ELF header is copied by instruction rep move string, as in video 5 of this series. Writing the file length into the ELF header is straightforward. The colon block is straightforward. The plus minus block is straightforward. The DMQ compiler works. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll write a program in this new language, DMQ, maybe an interactive calculator.